If you have been frustrated with how to get things to print properly for your journals or scrapbooks or anything else that you use your you want to use your printer for and it comes out looking grainy and not very aesthetically pleasing like this and you want it to look like this with all these lovely details and proper color alignment as well as printing on other materials like vellum stay tuned I also might be showing you how to print stickers using a regular AF normal person printer and also uh, trying to use a Cricut. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy. All right, so first we're gonna talk, talk about the options that I'm going to be printing on so you can get a feel for what they look like before and after. This is an A7 size, it's A, A5. I'm still weird about all of the, that sizing because I'm an American and everything is eight and a half by 11 here, but, um, or legal, legal document size. So, but it's, it's the big one and this is washi. Um, the shiny side is the washi paper side. And so this is what I use to print my washi stickers. I've sent some out in Ephemera Club. I've featured a lot that I've just printed for myself on my channel. I haven't added any to my shop yet because I'm, I'm gonna try a different brand because it's not reliable with cutting. I've had a lot of snagging problems with this brand and it was just a cheap one that I probably got off of AliExpress. But I'm gonna show you how to print on it anyway because I like using it, especially if you don't have a cutter. It's really nice to know how to print it so that you can at least fussy cut it yourself, which I did for a long time before I finally broke down and bought a cutter because they're not cheap. Um, this is a vinyl type sticker material. I also have an opaque white one, but I like the clear ones because the cut doesn't have to be as close and it just seems to get a little bit cleaner cut. I also, again, you can fussy cut this as well, but uh, yourself, but uh, this is just whatever brand that Michaels had. <laughs> it was just their house brand, um, 405 basics. Yeah. So that's this brand and I've been happy with them so far, but I haven't used it a whole, whole lot. All right, these two papers, this is regular printer paper. You know, see how you can kind of see through it. It's very thin. This is what you see at the office. This is what you usually just use in general with a regular printer. A lot of people I think have issues printing like digital kits and stickers and stuff because they use the setting for that really thin paper. This paper is 105 gram and 105 GSM. It's a lot thicker. It's just the heaviest paper I could find over the counter. I haven't tried ordering some fancy paper yet. I've also used resume paper, which has a really nice linen texture, um, but it can get a little muddy with the ink. This paper has been the best for printing like digital kits and, um, and that kind of thing. And then we have vellum, which used to be made with like calf skin <laughs> and uh, other animal skin. Nowadays, it's usually made with plant cellulose. So it's just a really thin, um, it's kind of like a glassine bag, but not shiny. And I don't know, I just really like the texture and I like that it's opaque and I love printing on this. This one, you can use a regular print on because it's so thin, it'll warp. I've made that <laughs> I've made that uh, mistake. It'll warp if you use the fancy printers and takes. So vellum and regular, regular AF printer paper. You use the plain paper setting or you can use um, the inkjet greeting card, but it's still going to be a little warped and it's still going to be a little bit muddy on the ink because they're so thin. All right, so we have my setup here and I have the second page of the garden journal uh, digital kit pulled up. So I'm just gonna choose the print option and I'm making sure it's in portrait because a lot of times, I don't know if y'all's printer does this, but mine does it where it <laughs> wants to try to print it landscape by default. And then we're gonna do one copy, letter size. If you're in another 
country that uses the bigger sizes, you uh, choose A4. I think that's what everybody else uses, but in the US we use 8.5 by 11. Plain paper, how I talked about earlier, if you're using plain paper, you want that setting, but it's not going to be a crisp image. It's not going to be a sharp image. You want to use either matte photo paper here, or you want to use high resolution paper, or you want to use inkjet greeting card for a matte heavyweight paper. You can use the high resolution paper with regular printer paper. You just have to be really careful to let it dry completely. But that's like, from what I've gathered is the next step up from plain printer paper. So you get a crisper image without having to buy a whole new ream of fancy paper. So I'm going to choose uh, matte photo paper with this one. No, we'll do, we'll do inkjet greeting card. No, we'll do matte photo paper. These two on matte paper seem to print just about the same. I'm not sure. Matte photo paper probably uses more ink, but they both come out pretty nice and crisp. So you can do fill page or shrink to fit. These are sized exactly to the eight and a half by 11, but you also have some edge here that I tried to build in to make sure that it didn't cut off any important bits. And I usually do the fill page because I don't like having to cut off all the white paper and then print. All right, so let's take some time to look at the differences in our printing. So both of these were used with the plain paper setting. This is plain printer paper that you get just standard anywhere that most home printers have. This is vellum. Now, as you can see, vellum is a lot thinner and it's not, it's not a huge difference and it didn't warp. So it still looks really nice using plain paper setting on vellum. However, when we switch to opaque paper, there is a really big difference between the plain printer setting with the thin paper, the standard home paper, and the 105 GSM paper on the higher resolution setting. I know my nails are hideous. I, they're so grown out. I'm getting them done today. Um, anyway, so you can see, I love, you can see in the original pages that I scanned in here, the original flowers, just everything I, I added and designed in the page, you can see the tiniest little details of the, the paper, of the fabric, the, the flowers, and it's like closer to a photo. It's closer to the original thing. If you weren't looking hard and you couldn't feel the texture, you might think that this was original. This, on the other hand, has very little defined features. It's a shadow of what the high resolution is. You could still probably print high resolution on regular home printing paper, but you have to worry about it bleeding and you have to worry about it just, you can't double print on both sides. That's another thing with this heavier paper. I can go in and print a whole different page on this side and it's not gonna bleed through, which would be an issue with this because you can already kind of see, I don't know if you can see, but you can see what's printed on the other side. It's just going to bleed and it's not gonna look as nice if you use the heavy print setting on the lighter paper. So these are your three examples. Just play around with paper weights and print settings is my advice. This is part of why I'm going to offer pre-cut, pre-printed <laughs> snail mail um, kits because the printing can be overwhelming. Getting a whole ream of a fancy paper when you only want to print a few things feels like a waste, I know, and I know a lot of people, I've already, I've had a lot of people comment they would rather just buy the kit itself and put it together, so I am going to offer that for you. But I did, for the people who already are pretty set up with a decent printer and don't mind because they print a lot and they want to get into doing printables, this way you have some, I, I hopefully I have saved you some headache on where you can, you know, how to do this and um, the different settings that you can use. It saved you some, some experimenting time. Just anytime you want something shiny like stickers, shiny stickers, shiny photo printer paper, choose the glossy setting, whatever your printer says, glossy setting. And then choose either greeting card setting, high resolution paper, or um, matte photo paper 
for printing on heavier weight papers. So I hope this helps. Let's go do stickers. Okay, so moving on to stickers. I am using my photo editing software here and I'm about to download, I use an online one, I'm about to download the um, image to print then cut on my Cricut machine. So make sure you have a PNG. Um, make sure all of your images are PNG because that means that your image, your images don't have a background. And a lot of times you'll see this black, or this like gray and white check background. And that's how you know that the machine will recognize the individual stickers rather than the full background. So I have temporarily uh, cleaned off. <laughs> Da, da, da. temporarily cleaned off my Cricut and because I haven't quite gotten my life together I can't leave it plugged in because it's too far away from my computer so I do the physical plug I think there's a Wi-Fi connection but they never work for me so then we want to power our baby on she'll warm up a little bit while we get the digital stuff worked out. Also, for those of you who want to know the kind of printer I have, it's this TR4720. It is a regular AF Canon printer, not sponsored. I got it for like 220 bucks on Amazon or maybe at my local Office Depot, but I had a really nice Canon and it's got the Pixma series brand or whatever on there. I had a really nice like $500 Pixma and I do like Canon. I've had the best luck with Canon out of all of the printers, but I didn't want to spend $500 on a printer. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to get a regular middle of the line printer and We'll see how. And we are going to print on the shiny, shiny. We're going to print both sticker papers, but we're going to start with the shiny first. Make sure you put the shiny down because the way it feeds, the way it feeds, ignore my dirty floor. Oh my God. Embarrassing. Um, the way it feeds, it needs to come up and it's going to roll this way. So that makes a big difference. Okay. So we are in the Cricut software to make stickers with the Cricut. You click new project up here and I already had a canvas open. So it'll open to this canvas here and you go down to upload. Now you have two options whenever you upload something to cut with the, the printer. So I'm going to choose complex because there are a lot of details and I know I'm going to print then cut. So if you have something that's more geometric or doesn't have as much variance in color, you can choose moderate complex or simple and then continue down at the bottom here, apply and continue. So you have the cut image. If you have a pretty background that you just want to cut, a die cut out of, you would choose cut image. So similar to one of those press die cut machines, you would want to choose the cut image or an envelope. I use envelopes a lot. So I'll have the image of the shape and then I print it or I cut it on whatever pretty paper that I have. Anyway, for this project, we want a print then cut if you're doing stickers. So choose that and then you'll see your most re recent image here, select it and then add to canvas. We have an alert over here, so we're going to click on it, see what it is. We're going to auto resize the image. I get that a lot. And I also get the low resolution image. This happens, especially when I'm using a lot of the Victorian, um, like Victorian postcard cuts. And that is just, I think, because the images themselves were low resolution when they were initially printed plus over a hundred years of, you know, wear and tear on them. So that's understandable. Okay. We are now all aligned and properly sized. We're going to push make <laughs> moving on. It's going to sh show you what the print and mat is going to look like, how to align it and everything. So I have the paper in the printer already. You push continue, send to printer. I don't like having this auto bleed on it doesn't, I don't like how it prints that way. And with the Cricut, you have to make sure that your printer settings, your natural printer settings are good. 
which means going into your printer settings through your computer. I wish they would change this in this software actually because I have to do this every time because otherwise your printer has to stay at the, you know, the whatever print preference that you have it on. It has to stay there and that's not necessarily good for ink uses. See right now it's plain paper and standard. We're using, we're gonna, we're gonna say photo paper, we're gonna say matte photo paper because I'm doing washi stickers with this and that tends to print really well. So once you change that, then it'll print like that through Cricut. Okay, now to add this to this insanely dirty, I've tried to clean this y'all. That's uh, one thing that's kind of tough about these is they, they just don't, um, it's really hard to clean them because they're sticky to keep the paper down. And so, you know, I have long hair, I have a black boxer dog. <laughs> She, y'all probably seen her in some of my shorts and the hair just gets everywhere. So yeah. Um, anyway, so you stick it down the best you can and then we're going to move to the machine. I like to set the machine a little heavier. I'm obviously using washi, pa washi paper, um, sticker paper, but I'm setting it higher because I want it to die cut. So I want it to think that it's heavier than it is. And then we push this and it will accept it and everything's where it's supposed to be, and then we're going to push start. And we're cutting. And finally, for those of you who don't have a Cricut or don't want to use the Cricut, um, or a, just a cutter in general, and you want to print on like a clear background or you just want a fussy cut in general, open your image. Make sure it's on portrait. If you want to shrink, shrink page, um, shrink to fit. Like I had a little bit of area over here that was gonna cause a problem. So um, anyway, so we want to change this to photo paper plus glossy two, and that is going to print on a sticker paper that is very shiny. Now. It depends on the quality of the sticker paper I'm finding. I've had issues printing. I've tried to get cheaper um, or fancy paper, like glitter paper, and it hasn't worked right. The ink won't dry. The one that I showed you, that brand that I showed you at the beginning of the video, it dries no problem. It looks like a photo image, and then we click print. So these I will cut into little squares or in rectangles to include an ephemera club because the images are a little too fine and they're too close together to cut on the Cricut. I don't like wasting paper, <laughs> wasting printer paper. So I will fit as much as I can on a singular page and the Cricut doesn't always like that. So um, I, I would rather just cut these out myself. All right, so looking at our two sticker are two types of stickers we printed. This is the glossy clear background that I'm just going to cut out and it won't have that. It'll be translucent, very PET tape like. And this is from a regular printer. It's not opaque, so it's going to have some see-throughness. The washi tape, as I kind of talked about at the beginning, I haven't been impressed with this washi tape. Um, paper because this happens when I'm cutting it. It doesn't matter how heavy I make the cut. I could have probably gone a little bit heavier, but this little chewed up look where it just catches on the on the blade irritates me because now I'm going to have to try this again with a heavier one. This doesn't tend to happen using any kind of vinyl or PET. This strictly tends to be a paper problem or a washi problem. So I'm still experimenting with this. I'm definitely still new to working with an electronic printer or an electronic cutter. And yeah, it's a little bit easier when you're using cardstock and heavier papers, but the lighter papers, the vellum, the, that kind of stuff, it does this. And I know there's a way around it. <laughs> I just haven't figured it out yet. So hopefully I um, answered some questions and saved some of you some headaches. I 
am still in the stage where I'm okay fussy cutting for my own uses and a little bit for, you know, my, my ephemera club uses, but the, the cutting, cutting machine is really nice in some ways and in some ways it's kind of hindering. The printing on this, good luck. I hope I answered questions here and um, you can look for this whole kit that will be available on the 15th which is I think this coming Friday so um, anyway let me know if you have any questions let me know if you know how to prevent this silly thing from happening and if you would like to see any other videos I am also filming a studio tour garden tour for, like aesthetic versus unesthetic that I'll be posting later this week too. I, I'm on vacation for my regular work. Can you tell? <laughs> because I'm all excited and doing, doing um, more videos. So this is what I like to do in my free time, <laughs> especially when my, my kids aren't home. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great week. Bye.